Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I found something at Tuesday morning today that got me excited and I thought I would make some more painted pa painted papers. And um, so I put together a few things that I would, thought I would show you about my painted paper, the painted paper that I make and how I do it and um, how I use some of it. So this is basically, I'll show you this in a second, but this is basically just paper that's been painted with acrylic paint. Um, I use it in my journals quite a bit. Um, this is actually the backing page from a piece that I set my paper on top of and then squeegee the paint off. And then this is, over time, this is what I end up with. So I've actually used those in journals. And then it's pretty common that I put paint on that way just with a gift card or whatever, like you can see back here and back here. Um, so I use it, I use the technique a lot in a lot of my journals. And then here's some examples of books. This is one I'm working on. I don't have it put together yet, but I wanted to do a Coptic stitch, which is an exposed, you know, stitch that will go across the back of this one because I think that the way that the spine would look if, if all of that color was exposed would be really pretty. So these are all painted, hand-painted papers. And I, I paint most of them with, um, with these gift cards or hotel keys. Um, let's see. The tar these like Target gift cards, they're, they don't work very well and neither do the iTunes gift cards, honestly. So the hotel keys and the gift cards are the best, but these little things I found today at um, Tuesday morning are even better. So this is just an example of, these are book pages and different types of paper, graph paper, office paper, notebook paper, comp book paper that I put together. Put this back on here. I can't wait to get that one bound. Here's one that I just absolutely adore. It's, um, it has, let's see, it has five signatures and then I covered the spine after I sewed the signatures and I covered the spine with a piece of corrugated glitter paper. And here's the inside. The end papers are made with some of this, these backing papers. And then the entire book is painted papers and little tabs that I glued on that have fabric sewn on them. And I cannot wait to use this journal. I was kind of thinking about using this one maybe as um, a poetry journal, not because I don't write poetry that anyone would ever want to read, um, but I love poetry, so I thought I could copy poems, you know, or cut poems out of other books and stuff and, and make this a place to keep up with um, poems and such. But I love the pages, the way that um, once you put it together, you know, they're so different and they're you know, they're no two are alike. They're fun to see the color, color contrasts and things like that. So there's that one. And then I did this one. I think I did this last weekend. Uh, this is a composition book. I haven't done anything to the cover yet, but I went ahead and painted the whole book, all, let's see, all 200 pages. Um, I went through and painted and it actually took a while because you can't just go from one page to the next to the next to the, you have because they'll stick together even though when you squeegee them off they're mostly dry um, they still stick together so you have to kind of wade and flip back and forth and then I also have a little travel hair dryer that I use um, to dry try and dry them off a little a little more quickly so I'm not sure what I want to do in this book either but I could just sit and flip through the pages, honestly, and be perfectly fine, perfectly happy with that. So 
some of the paint, painted papers that I have. This is, um, these are notebook paper. So I've used these more to, like I cut them up and use them in the journal. I'll journal on this little piece and then glue it in the journal um, or glue in a whole page. So this is literally, this is loose leaf notebook paper and I only painted it on one side. So this I'm intending to use um, to glue in on something else. So, and I love having lined paper uh, to journal on. So that's what all of this is, is loose leaf notebook paper that's painted. And then this is composition book paper. And what I do with these is I disassemble these um, composition books just take the stitching out. They come apart really easily. And what I love about using this composition book paper is that I can keep this size. So I have this, this size as a folio. And then if I put this in one of my junk journals, I can put it in, you know, bind it in this way. And then I've got lined paper to write on. So I love working on this composition book paper. And so this is a stack of composition book paper that's painted on both inside and outside. So this whole stack here is comp book paper that's all painted. And then I'm gonna show you one more thing. Oh, these are some book pages. Oh, that one I'm I guess I started that one and didn't finish it, so I'm gonna put it aside because I'll finish it now. So these are some, some book pages, book text. And then I was gonna show you these because they're so pretty. So these are, this is just tabloid size office paper, but this is what I put my paper on and then I use the paint squeegee, you know, to squeegee it off. And then I usually have two or three of these going at the same time because once it gets pretty saturated with paint, then if you put another piece on top of an area that's kind of saturated, that's not quite dry yet, then it will um, sort of pull the paper apart if it sticks to it. So I usually have like two or three of these going at a time during a painting session. And that way I can let one dry and use the other one so I just, I think these turn out, I mean, they're almost like little works of art by themselves. Um, they turn out so cool. And this, you know, there's no planning involved here whatsoever. This is literally just, that one I've only used on one side so far, so I can use the other side of it. This one is um, deli paper that I used. I don't like the deli paper as much as I like, like an office weight paper. And then this is um, parchment paper. This one's ledger paper, which I decided I'm not ever gonna do again because this beautiful ledger paper is be becoming scarce. So I, um, I won't do that anymore. I don't wanna waste any of it. And then here's some, this is a, an envelope, a big mailing envelope that I opened out and I'm using and then here's some I haven't finished. Here's a paper bag that I've used as a backing. And this one actually at this point is, um, it's got some slices through it and stuff like that, but uh, this will make some fantastic collage paper, you know, when I'm, when I'm ready to tear that up. And then here's the pieces that I tested this little squeegee on this morning, some music paper. So it's just gonna show you kind of my process. Today I have, I, this is a Target paper bag, just a piece of a Target paper bag. And then I also have, my husband is a home builder. So we also have uh, lots of house plans um, that he has extras of. So I thought I would use one of those today as a backing. So let me clean this off show you kind of how I start going. So I usually have multiple papers going at the same time and that's because the side of one will be drying 
while I'm working on the next one. And I took off all my jewelry and I have an apron on. And I thought I'd also show you kind of the difference in the way that some of the papers um, and some of the paints work. So these I'm ready to do the other side. And you can see I did get some pink on there and I'm really into these uh, neon paints. If you can avoid it, anything like this, hard bits that come off um, of the paint bottle, you wanna get rid of those because if they get mixed in with the paint, then it leaves like little scratches um, where you're, you know, cause you get bumps and stuff in your paint. So paint wise, for the most part, I usually use just this craft acrylic, this cheap craft acrylic. Um, sometimes it can be really gritty. Uh, kind of almost like a, it has a chalky finish, a little bit of a chalky finish somehow. And you can't be too particular, you know, I mean, the way that I do it, because you see, I, I'll pull the paint off here and then I get it here and then I pick the page up and move it. And then this paint ends up getting on the back side here. So it's a pretty messy process. But if, if you like it, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. Just make sure your area is ready. So I do not put much thought into color combinations or sometimes I combine colors that I think, oh, those will look horrible together because I'm curious, you know, what will happen. Sometimes I just do two colors on a page. Sometimes I do three. Um, I usually don't do more than three, I have to say. And that's probably just because I've noticed that when I do more than three, you just end up with mud, with kind of a mud color. I do like to get all the way to the edge of the pages. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you my process, how I kind of work on this. And these little squeegees, these are, like I showed you, these little, um, it's an ice, icing scraper set from Tuesday morning, and it had two sizes in it. But the, the thickness of it, the weight of it, is just great. And then I just have a baby wipe here. I just clean it off with a baby wipe. So this is usually how I'm working on them. I've got these couple of pages that are kind of damp now. So I'm going to set them over to the side. And pull out another piece. Here's one I started. And it kind of takes a little bit of getting used to how much paint to put on. Um, I tend to put, I tend to kind of put too much, but you can kind of practice and um, Kind of fine tune it so that um, so you're not putting on too much. The other thing I do when I'm when I'm spreading the paint, I spread it out. So here's some other pages. I spread it out, and then I make sure that I don't have any shiny areas. So I'll keep. This one's almost out. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see, but you see how right there it's still shiny? So that I would go over again. I'd scrape over that again. That one's just about had the end of its, at the end of its days. I just love going through this is so um, it's so much fun 
it's fun because some of the paint, some of the colors um, mix well. You know, some sometimes you can mix yellow and blue and get green, and sometimes you mix yellow and blue and you get blue or you get, you know, but it's fun to see what you kind of come up with. So there's those two that are still kind of damp. I'm gonna put those to the side. And then this one, these that I was working on, these are a lot drier now. So actually this is a fourth color, but I'm gonna spread this so I can And I felt that I just got a whole bunch of this on the back of this other sheet. I have done a, I put up a clothesline in my art room here and stretched them across, hung them on a, a clothesline so they could dry. And it was really pretty having a clothesline of pretty paper trailed across my room. And if you're just using a gift card, this is this is all I do. Works the same way. I just like the idea of the scraper. Also because sometimes I pick up the gift card with the wrong side or something. So this I know I'm always going to pick it up at the top. And they really feel, they feel neat after you, um, after you finish them too. It's getting kind of, kind of thick on there. So I put together just uh, an assortment of pages that I wanted to paint today. Here's some pages out of that. It's actually a petroleum drilling book. Um, I have, I wanted to show you, this is, um, a shinier paper. Um, I bought this uh, at Half Price Books, and I think it was $3 for the set of two. But it's a photographer, and it's got, the other one has more like architecture pictures in it and stuff, but this volume is pictures of the back of women's heads. Maybe that, and some men, maybe, yeah. I mean, it's so cool. So, you can do this with shiny paper, you know, glossy paper, like magazine paper. I just, magazine paper is not really heavy enough for me to use in my journals as pages, but um, this is a heavy or glossier finish, you know, than this paper, and it works just just fine on here. And then here's some book text, some music paper, some graph paper, and then some old um, printouts that my mom gave me. So I just kind of pull from stacks of stuff. And then also my composition paper, which I love using. So you can go different directions. I mean, there's not much to it. A kid can do this, I guess. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty elementary. But I enjoy playing with the colors and combining them. My favorites to combine are pinks and yellows. I love the pinks and yellows together. So I just keep scraping over it until I know that there's, there's no paint pooled on it anywhere. And then I just stack them up like this so they can kind of dry and then I'll go to the bottom of the stack and pull something off there. 
The other thing I was going to show you, um, so I used this cheap craft paint, but I was also going to show you as far as acrylic paint goes, this is, this is, um, Grombacher, but this is more like student grade acrylic and the color is usually a lot more saturated and the paint goes on a lot smoother. Kind of goes further too. So this is actual, this is student grade acrylic. Um, I usually don't use a lot of the student grade acrylic, but I use it more than I do my professional acrylics. And I'll show you how those look too. That red kind of looks like blood. I don't know if I like that. Oops. I don't think I like that color. Scrape it off my paper here and so that's kind of how the um, Student acrylics look. They're they're definitely the paint's definitely brighter. It's smoother. It doesn't feel as chalky. And then you can kind of move up from there, from the student grade up to professional acrylics. And the difference there is a whole, you know, the different, the, the quality difference between this craft paint and this student paint is huge. And the difference between this student paint and this professional acrylic is huge. So it's fun to play with them because you can see, you know, what kind of effect you get from, from them. And I, I don't, um, I don't discriminate. I mix craft acrylic with professional acrylic. I do it all the time. The color is so, so pretty. I'll try to keep those paint boogies off there. Ooh. And it's definitely a get messy thing, so. Acrylic paint cleans up really easily, though. I'm just clean it up with water. And what I like about doing this, you know, you can paint paper like this with acrylic, but you couldn't do this with uh, watercolor or anything like that. It, would, it wouldn't dry so instantly. Dry, it wouldn't dry as quickly as this does. So there's some professional acrylic on that one. And then this one is a Holbein professional acrylic. Sometimes I've noticed that if I put, put the paint on like this in, um, you know, a little swirly or a straight line or whatever, then if the paper is really porous, sometimes it will that design that I used, you know, a swirly or whatever, will still be there after you smooth the paper out. Kind of like it soaks in. If the paper's really porous, it will soak in like that. And then this one I'm probably going to put a little more on because I don't, for some reason I like for all the edges to be covered feels more um, feels more complete to me so 
So as you can see, the way I work on them, um, you know, I still haven't finished any of these. These are still all sitting here waiting for me to work on the back side as the fronts are kind of drying off. And then let me show you this golden acrylic. are so and if you could probably didn't turn it on there the colors are so saturated and beautiful and you can't I'm sure you can't tell on camera but it's um it's just so smooth and you know once you put it on it's the paper's nice and porous it doesn't take much before it's practically dry golden acrylic teal. I'm going to go from this end. So that's kind of pretty. A little more up here. And I also don't necessarily put the same color on each side of a piece of paper. So this one I have a green and yellow thing going on, which actually I wanna, I wanna cover this edge before I do the other side, so. Something else I like to do, and I find it works better with this, with um, professional paint. The um, craft acrylic is, is too thin for this to work the way I like it. But this is just white, and the white looks really cool over, layered over the other colors. But like I said, this, um, the craft paint usually isn't thick enough to get a very opaque um, coating. So when I do this, I am usually sit and watch, a, I'll put a movie on my, put a movie on my computer here on my desk and I can just sit for a couple of hours and paint paper. And then I was just, I was really excited to find these, these little scrapers. I'm hoping that they hold up well. One problem I have with the gift cards is that sometimes after a while, whatever is on, there's a Whatever's printed on here is kind of like a plastic coating, and sometimes it will start to peel off. And as it does, you'll get little nicks and things in the plastic, and then as you drag it across the paper, you've got lines and things in the paper, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm hoping that these will last. I bought, I bought one. I found them in the craft section too, incidentally not in the cooking section. Um, but I found them this morning, I brought it home and tried it, and then I went back and bought two more because I was like, these are great. So I know from kind of working here, this is getting sort of, and usually I don't work with a piece of backing paper quite this big. What I'm finding is with a piece of paper this big, I don't turn it as often. Because usually if I'm working with a 
smaller piece of paper, you know, like a tabloid size or something, I'm constantly turning it so that I don't, see how I kept going over the same spot over and over. And then it kind of gets to where it doesn't want to dry. So I'll turn, you know, keep turning it. We can do this and try this. I don't, I don't usually mix paint on here at the same time. And it's a whole different, see that, that look that you get? It's kind of a marbled, but the paint in these two colors may have been really bad to try together. Because, but I personally like the effect that I get from putting one color on and letting it dry and then putting the next color on top of that. So I don't usually put multiple colors on together because unless you're sure that they're gonna mix nicely, you just kind of end up with, with mud. So if you like having, you know, painty papers in your books, um, this is a fun way to pass the time, get messy. I, I am a color lover. And if you look at my journals, um, there aren't a lot of them that, uh, I don't do a lot of just, you know, um, distressed edges and things like that. Um, I, I would rather have color. I'd rather have bright colors than. Than brown, I guess is what I'm. And if you can hear the traffic, I live on a busy street and it's so nice outside. It rained really hard this morning, but it's so nice outside I have the door open. But it's fun to pull these out and look. I think I, you know, try something different. This paper is really porous. This is an old book on salesmanship. It's got some funny quotes in it, some, you know just really what you would think of as like classic salesman kind of stuff. You know, how to get housewives to buy things when you're going door to door and that sort of stuff. I think that one's done. Put some more pink on this side. <coughs> Excuse me. If I get that, which is like the paint is kind of gloppy and icky, I, I wipe it off and start again because it, you can see like right here what happened. See it, it tore the edge of the paper because if you get that goopy stuff, that, you know, blobby paint in there and pull it across, then it, um, it's very abrasive and it will tear your paper. So if I accidentally get some of that bloppy stuff, I clean my, clean my scraper off and start fresh. And since I got that in there, I think I'm gonna put a little bit of this pink on the side of this. Whoa, I said a little bit. That's not a little bit. That is a lot.
sometimes I get pages that I really think are ugly. And I have noticed that for me, those pages are when I end up with a lot of this, just little bits everywhere. It's just not as attractive to me. So I'm thinking, is there anything else that I, any other tips I could say about making painted paper? Um, it's a great way to you can also just do it on plain old This is just uh, office paper, copy, you know, copier paper. It's been printed on, but Oops. Let's see how do I want to deal with that? If you need to know, uh, your venti strawberries and cream cappuccino blended in a venti has 650 calories. Oh, I was going to do one of these. This um, slicker paper. It's fun to experiment with paper and see. I don't know if you can tell from me doing it, but this paint is going a lot. It's spreading a lot further on this paper. And I think that's because this paper is, um, it's treated. It's got a finish on it. That's why it's kind of glossy. So it's not nearly as porous as say, you know, this paper that's from an older book and probably doesn't have much of a finish on it at all. As opposed to like this, here's the salesman book. This is very soft and very, very porous. We'll try some of this because that's, um, that's a book from the Dollar Tree. So it's a new book. see how this works. Sometimes you have to be careful with, or I do, I'm kind of careful with um, books that I get from the Dollar Tree, the fiction, because the language can be kind of bad. Some of the pages, and I don't want to ever use something that has some offensive language on it or something and then bind it into a book and not realize it's there. So this is definitely more porous. I can tell it's gonna take longer to, to dry and you can also see how it's kind of curling up on its own. I love this um, neon red. Oh, there is one more thing I'll show you. Okay, a piece of this. I don't have a lot of them, but I have this. Um, this is metallic acrylic, and it looks, it is so fantastic on here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but in person, it really ends up with a totally metallic it's got a totally metallic finish so 
I have this blue that I bought. And then I have, let's see. Oh, that's glitter. This one, this is gold. It makes, I, I have noticed that the metallics make a good um, final coat. If you put the metallic on top of whatever you're gonna, because you kind of lose the effect if you put it on and then put something else over it. It can also be kind of fun, like if I have these pages under here and I spread it out. But you can get um, lines or textures. And I don't want too much texture, like I said, because I like to actually... Oh, this is the one I was looking for. Um, this metallic. This is pearl white. So this pearl on top of this blue... looks really cool and there again it may be an effect that is kind of lost on the camera but in person can you see it it looks really cool so I love to use this um, pearl white and then I've got some silver there and then the other one was I just threw it across the room Hold on to your bottles while you're uh, while you're shaking. So this is the copper color. Ooh, that might be too much. If it is too much, and I know it's too much to begin with, then I usually before I even try to scrape it all over this one, I just get another piece of paper and scrape some of it off on that. And I can feel that my under paper under here is getting really buckled and soft. So, and that's because like I said, I'm not rotating because it's so big. It's half a sheet of an architectural plan. Um, so I'm not rotating it around like I do if I use something smaller, but Here's the copper metallic, and it's really pretty. The copper is pretty layered on top of things. And then this is the silver. I don't remember ever being like overly impressed with the silver. Yeah, I'd much prefer this pearl over the silver. So. Let me show you one more thing. This. This is Luminous Opera Holbein Acrylic. So this is a professional acrylic. And this color. Oh, this color is dreamy. Maybe, maybe I love this so much because I grew up in the 80s. Well, I mean, my teenage years were in the 80s. And um, there was a point in the 80s when uh, neon was really, really popular. And I used to buy things at a store called Express at the mall. If you're, if you're my age, I'm sure you know what it was you know about it. Just look at that. Oh, put your sunglasses on for that one. I love it. But this is expensive paint. You know, I probably paid $25 for this tube of paint. Or $18 or something. So, 
I'm not as liberal with my professional acrylics, doing this with my professional acrylics as I am with using this craft acrylic, but you definitely can get very different results. And this Luminous Opera is one of my favorites. Let me see if I have, oh, that. This one's pretty. This is really pretty. So this Naples yellow, this is also a Holbein. And it's very opaque. See, this has an opacity rating on the back. It's very opaque, but it's a beautiful color, beautiful yellow. Like I was saying, I love the, I love combining, um, oh, I just wasted all that. I love combining yellow and pink because it's always interesting. Sometimes when you layer the two colors, you know how I was saying, you know, yellow and blue makes green. Well, sometimes it makes orange. And then sometimes in the case of like these two paints, that luminous opera had already been on there. I guess, and was dry enough that it really doesn't, it kind of makes an orange, but it's almost like you can just see that it's a yellow and a pink. But I love this yellow and pink together. And that, so this is a, an extremely opaque, even though it's yellow, this is considered a very opaque. And then, Here's um, I showed you this copper. This is craft copper. So let's try this professional iridescent copper. <sighs> yeah, this is too expensive though to just. Oh, that's it's so heavy and. It covers kind of like, well, you know what I was going to say, it, it kind of covers like a layer of plastic, but that's basically what acrylic paint is, is plastic. Wow. So there's, um, there's craft acrylic and professional acrylic. This is really pretty in person. Oh, one more thing. I'm never gonna finish this video. I have some of this. This is folk art. It's just matte acrylic folk art paint. And this goes on this particular paint, this black. It goes on so nice and thick. That little boogie off there. And it, it goes on, oh no. It goes on so thick and beautiful. Look at that. I mean, it's almost like a chalkboard finish. And then you can write on this with your um, white pens. I've used, I use a white jelly roll on this. Oh, it's, it's great. So anyway, this one I've had great luck with, the Folk Art Matte Acrylic in Black. Um, kind of get a, you kind of get a uh, chalkboard finish out of it. So, there you go, that's what I was gonna share. All started because I found these icing scrapers today at Tuesday morning. So now that I've started this mess, I'm gonna keep going. So I ought to have a big new stack of painty papers soon. Um, and if you guys are ever interested, you know, I, I don't see why I couldn't list some of these stacks of papers in my, um, in my Etsy shop because I love making them 
and um, it is kind of a messy process so you have to sort of set aside a place and a time to do it but the results if you like colorful and bright like this lusciousness um, then it's a really fun project so get to painting bye guys see you in the next video